Hey everyone, it's Johnny Five. On today's video, we're going to be going over how to install and program the Kelly 45 amp mini brushless controller. We're going to be putting it on this e-bike here. It's a mid-drive bike. And I recently had the controller go out on this bike. This is about a three-year-old build. And we're going to replace it with that 45 amp controller. So with that, let's get started. So to begin with, we're going to go ahead and take this controller off. And we're probably going to save some of these connectors just to install on the new controller. And we'll probably, I'll probably ditch this uh, contraption here since that's a little hokey looking. So when you get the controller from Kelly, you get a few things in the kit. It comes with the connectors that correspond with the plugs on the controller itself, the pins for it, rubber grommets for sealing, and it also comes with a 1000 ohm pre-charge resistor, a couple of diodes, and the RS-232 communication port so that you can communicate with the controller to your computer. I also did order the RS-232 to USB adapter so that I can communicate with my laptop. And this is something that you'll probably have to order since a lot of us don't use a plug like that anymore. So I went ahead and got the Kelly controller mounted to the bike. Um, I'll go ahead and mention now that this doesn't have the factory plugs on the controller. Um, this was previously used for doing testing on a, some other motors that I had, um, but now I'm just gonna dedicate it to this bike. Uh, but a factory controller has these plugs on it. Sometimes I don't use these just because they're pretty big and bulky, but uh, if you choose not to cut into the factory harness on the Kelly, then you go ahead and leave them. So now we're gonna go ahead and wire up the controller to the motor and to the throttle and get this thing running. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this by soldering up the three phase wires. We'll go color for color on this, blue to blue, green to green, yellow to yellow, and then we'll follow it up by doing all the hall sensor wires. So now I have the phase lead soldered up and I'm gonna leave the heat shrink um, not shrunk onto the wiring yet uh, just because we definitely wanna make sure that these wires are in the correct configuration. Uh, sometimes these coloring isn't correct on, on these controllers from the controller to the motor since these are two different companies that made this. So we'll just keep this like this for now until we know the motor works. So we're gonna to move to the hall sensors next, uh, as far as wiring goes. And this is the part that gets kind of tricky. Uh, Kelly's wiring, as far as the coloring goes on the hall sensors, usually doesn't match up with most of the motors that I've dealt with. And I'll go ahead and put a diagram up right now that you can pause on and jot down so that you have an idea of where to go with this. But the colors don't match as far as what I've discovered. So I'm gonna go with what I have written on the diagram and try that first and see where we end up. Remember to always put on the heat shrink before you solder the wires. We're gonna go ahead and start with the two negative wires, which on the controller side is wire number 21 or pin number 21 if you're keeping the connector. And we'll go ahead and go to the black wire on the motor, since that is our negative. And then next we'll do pin five, which is the purple wire. Uh, that is our positive five volts off of the controller. Again, that's pin number five. That goes to our red wire on our motor, which is positive five volts. Here's where it gets different. Controller wire 18, which is this yellow wire, goes to the blue wire on the, on the hall sensor side of the motor. And go ahead and connect those two now. Our next wire is gonna be green 
from the controller side to yellow on the motor side. If I can get this thing lined up. Here we go, all right. Here we go. So that is again pin 17 to the yellow uh, wire on the motor. And then our final wire is wire number 16 or pin 16 on the controller to our green wire on the motor. And that is it. So now, so now with that funky uh, reconfiguration of what they have, this is more than likely going to work because this is a combination that I've found with Kelly controllers to work on every motor that I have tried. I don't know why, maybe they can change that. Um, but for now, that's what we got. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the shrink on, but not all the way. Just, just like the phase wires, we don't want to completely shrink this until we are 100% sure this is all the way it goes. Kind of like a pre-run or a pre-check on everything just to make sure it works. All right, so now we have the hall sensor wires all wired up. We're gonna go ahead and go to the hall throttle and then we're gonna hook up the power and see if we can get this motor to spin up. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and wire up the throttle now and then there is a pink wire over here, right here, that is uh, marked as number seven on the pinout. Um, and it is on plug DJ7091Y-2.3-11. And that is the power wire to turn on the controller um, when you want to turn it on. Now this can get a switch power from uh, any switch of your choice, or you can wire this directly into the battery, which this that's what I do. And on the diagram, they do call for a two amp fuse to go between this and the battery. And so that's what we'll do. So that's the only wire that I use off of that plug. And then the three wires that come off of the uh, throttle are right here. And those are on the plug labeled DJ7091Y-2.3-21. And it is pin number four for the positive five volts, which is uh, this purple wire right here, our ground, which is pin number 20. And then this dark green wire right here is pin number three, and that's our throttle signal. So we'll go ahead and wire all that up and, uh, and go from there. Okay, so I got everything wired up on the controller for the battery and the hall sensor. Uh, I went ahead and did that wiring from the uh, pink wire, the positive wire, or the on wire directly into the battery. I did want to mention one thing. I didn't use the pre-charge circuit that you would find on the Kelly website. Um, that's because this pre-charge system is for uh, usually used on a contactor system and since this has a BMS with MOSFETs that control the on and off function on the bike I went ahead and directly wired it into the BMS straight to the controller. Okay we're gonna go ahead and see if it turns on and see if the motor fires up or if it doesn't uh, we'll figure out why. So here we go. Batteries on, FETs have turned on, controllers on it's all looking good. We don't have any uh, any warning signals going on. And let's see, a little bit of throttle input. Ooh. There it goes. That's it. Wow. That's actually that's actually kind of lucky how how well that worked right off the bat. Um, usually there's some tuning involved, which we'll still go ahead and go through all of the functions on the computer next, uh, just to be sure everything's okay, but 
This is actually surprisingly smooth. That's pretty gnarly. Okay, we're gonna go through this pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this uh, setup right now because we're just gonna get this uh, set up for the motor that we're running. Um, I'll do another video on a more in-depth uh, setting up of this uh, whole program. Um, but for right now, like I said, we'll just go ahead and, and zoom through this so that we can get riding on the spike. Okay. Okay, so the first one is the forward switch. We're going to leave that disabled. Foot switch, we're going to leave that disabled. Okay, next one is the throttle sensor, and we're going to make sure that this is at 0 to 5 volts because that's what type of sensor we have. It's a hall sensor. And the next one is throttle effective starting. Um, we're going to go ahead. I usually go with 20%. Um, this means that once you hit 20% of your throttle um, voltage, it'll start up the motor. And then throttle effective ending, I usually put this at around 80. Um, so once it hits around 4 volts on the sensor, then it's going to consider that to be full throttle. Uh, the next one's max current. I usually leave this at 100% because I want 100% of the controller's power to go to my motor. Next one is max battery current. I leave that at 50%. That's fine. Next page. Okay, startup delay. I always have this at zero because I want it to re react as quickly as possible. Um, as far as when I hit the throttle and the controller actually reacts and goes. Uh, next one's important. Um, you need to know your hall sensor type. Uh, you need to check and see what your motor is. If it's 120 degree, if it's 120 degree or a 60 degree, in this case we have a 60 degree spacing on our hall sensors in the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Next one, controller mode or control mode. Um, you can either get more torque out of the motor or more speed. I usually leave this as a balanced. Next one's kind of important, under voltage. Um, we have a BMS on our bike that takes care of under voltage, but I like to have a second parameter. And since we're 14S, uh, 44 volts is about where I want to stop this thing from uh, draining anymore. So we have that set to 44. Over voltage, uh, I have this pegged out at 60 volts. I'm not worried about that. Um, next is throttle up and down rate. I have this at the fastest setting. Power on high pedal disable. Uh, I have that enabled. Release brake, high pedal disable. I have that enabled. So next page. So again, I'll make another video that gets a lot more in depth on this. But for right now, we're just skimming through this so that we can uh, get riding. Uh, next one, motor top speed, 100% because we know why. Uh, motor poles, we're not going to worry about that. All of these are disabled. Um, I'm just going to leave that for now. Uh, we'll go over that again in the next video about uh, Kelly controller setup. Uh, motor top speed in reverse. We don't worry about that because we're not going to reverse. Okay, next page is regen. We're going to go ahead and disable that because we can't take advantage of regen because we have a free wheel between the motor and our crank. So we are not even able to utilize that function. Uh, so we'll leave that as disabled. Brake switch, just leave that as disabled. Uh, this is disabled. And uh, basically anything within this regen setting uh, doesn't matter to us right now. Joystick, disabled. Uh, cruise control, if you want cruise, you can enable this. And how this works is if you hold the throttle for five seconds in a certain position, it will basically just hold that throttle even when you let off the throttle. I usually leave this disabled all the time because that kind of that's kind of tricky and I don't really like that. Um, but to each his own. Next page. Motor sensor. As far as temp sensors go. I usually leave this disabled because a lot of these motors don't have a temp sensor, but if you have a temp sensor and it's one of these two types of sensors, you can go ahead and click that and use it. The, uh, you can have the controller shut off if your motor gets over temp uh, and then you can have it 
basically resume after uh, after a certain temp. So again, uh, we're going to leave this disabled now because we do not have that set up on this motor. Um, this whole section right here, I usually leave this alone. Uh, I don't click on any of these, but um, yeah, we'll we'll take a look that at that in more depth on the video that covers the Kelly controller setup a little bit more. And that is it. We're finished. We can click finish. We're going to click yes. This thing's going to shut off. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go turn off the controller, turn off the bike, and then we're going to turn the controller back on and it should save all the settings that we just put into it. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope that was uh, useful for you guys um, on installing the Kelly 45 amp controller. Um, if I got anything wrong on that video or I missed something, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below um, because we're all always learning and I'd love to learn something new if I miss something. So um, with that, I hope you guys have a good ride and we'll see you on the next one. All right, bye.